I'm really pleased to be, able to be the first person to say good afternoon, Brixton. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about this for a different solution to austerity? How about we just print our own money? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, actually, that's what we started doing in Brixton three and a half years ago. And I'm going to tell you how and why. But first of all, what the hell is a local currency? I mean, that's, that's crazy talk, isn't it? We have something called sterling. It's valid all over the country. Everyone accepts it. We kind of trust it. So why do we need something else? Well, what's interesting is actually we've had local currencies and alternative currencies for hundreds of years. It's not a new idea. The other thing is that Actually, we all tend to use many different types of currency in our daily lives, but we just don't realize it. If you use loyalty points, or maybe air miles, or maybe mobile phone top-up cards, these are actually all types of currency. Uh, they all have different financial models. They're all designed to do different things. Some of them we buy for sterling. Some of them we receive in exchange for shopping in a particular place. But it's all currency. The other interesting point is you might, you might think that money is neutral. It's, it's just something we use to pay for stuff. But it's not neutral. And in fact, the kind of money or the kind of currency that we have in our pocket influences how we spend. So if you get your credit card out, chances are you're going to spend in a completely different way than if you're using cash or loyalty points. But let's move on. Why did Brixton need a local currency. Brixton has a problem that you can see on almost every high street in the UK, if not the Western world. If you go down Brixton's high street, it's lined with large chain stores that are nationally or globally owned. And that's where most retail spending takes place. Just to give you an idea of how much spending takes place in this type of business, have a look at some figures for spending on food in the whole borough of Lambeth. <laughs> and you'll see that an astounding 93% of all spending on food takes place in one of the 29 supermarkets in Lambeth. So that's only 7% left for the many hundreds of other small businesses. Now you might say, why does that matter? You know, the, the supermarkets are doing a good job, aren't they? I mean. We all like to shop there. What's wrong with that? Well, the problem is that when we spend money in a large chain outlet, that money isn't worth very much to our community. It doesn't stay local. In fact, the New, Econ the New Economics Foundation did some research, and they found that around 85% of every pound that you spend in a, a chain or a supermarket or a business like that immediately leaves the area it basically ends up in shareholders' pockets, it ends up at head office, it goes into long supply chains, because of course, big chains don't source anything locally. So, 373 million pounds, that's a lot of money for our community to be losing every year. It's kind of like a leaky bucket, really. We pour money in, and it just leaks out. Compare that with what happens if you spend your money in a locally owned independent business. It's a different story. There, the research shows that something like 70 to 80% of your money actually does stay in the local area because a business owner and their staff are much more likely to source services and supplies on a local basis and, of course, to spend on a personal level. And what we see is you get something that we sometimes call the local multiplier effect. As you spend your money in a business, and that business then respends that money, it's effectively worth more to the community. It, it's like new money, new wealth in the area. So that's a big difference. It, it's basically like that pound that you spend suddenly became worth about four times as much to Brixton, to our community, as if you spent it in a supermarket. So, when we started with the Brixton Pound, we wanted to try and work out 
how could we launch a scheme that would promote this idea, that would promote local, independent businesses, locally owned businesses? And a group of economists and activists and people who were members of Transition Town Brixton came together and started to try and discuss what might work. And we came up with a, a very simple model. It's called the Brixton Pound. You go and buy it in exchange for sterling, one-to-one -one exchange rate, and then you go and spend your Brixton Pounds, uh, which are paper notes, and they look like this. And I'll put a slide up in a minute so you can see them properly. Um, and you go and spend your Brixton Pounds in one of the many local businesses that accept them. And then that local business is making a commitment to re-spend those Brixton Pounds locally. Because, of course, Brixton Pounds aren't worth anything if you take them out of Brixton. The other point about this was that the Brixton Pound as a, as a thing, it, it's a talking point. It's a symbol of pride in our community. So the scheme launched in... September 2009, uh, and these are the notes that we had at launch. Um, if you go and spend bricks and pounds today, however, uh, you'll probably be spending something that looks like this. These are the second issue notes that were launched in September 2011. The scheme had a, a huge amount of media interest when we launched. Obviously, people found this is a, a crazy idea, you know. Um, Lots of people ask the question, well, is, is it legal? Is it a tax dodge? And the answer is yes to the first, no to the second. Uh, effectively, the bricks and pound is like a voucher in the eyes of the law. So businesses aren't obligated to accept it. It's not a tax dodge either. Uh, businesses have to pay tax on money that they receive in bricks and pounds, just like anything else. As, when the scheme launched, we had about 10,000 Brixton pounds enter into circulation very quickly in the space of a couple of weeks. Uh, however, fast forward a year after that, and we started to see a different effect. We started to see a bit of a problem. Uh, the problem was that most people, most of the time, don't use cash. We're all so used to using our credit cards, and it's so convenient that the idea that you would go to a cash point, take out sterling, then go somewhere else, change it into bricks and pounds, that was a real barrier to people actually using the scheme. So we knew that we had to try and come up with uh, an e-currency solution, an electronic solution. And we started thinking about what might work. And then we realized something else. Um, we realized that credit card technology is very expensive for businesses because the business has to rent a terminal, they may well need a separate phone line, and then of course there are the transaction charges, which can be as high as 3.5% on every transaction that they receive. So we wanted to come up with something that was a cheaper solution for small businesses, and that would also be good for market traders who maybe didn't have access to a phone line or a power outlet. So we came up with a payment solution that was actually one of the UK's first mobile currencies, an entirely text message-based solution that we call Pay by Text. Uh, very, very simple idea. Basically, you have an online Brixton Pound account, which you can transfer funds into, and then you go into a shop. Your mobile phone is linked to the account. You send a text message to a special number, and then you get a confirmation back. The retailer gets a confirmation back. Uh, a couple of seconds later, uh, very quick, very simple, very easy. And by the way, uh, we launched Pay by Text six months before the first mainstream mobile payment solution in the UK, which was Barclays Ping It. <laughs> this is the first Pay by Text transaction that happened on September the 29th, 2011. It was me buying a sandwich. <laughs> we immediately saw the effect on our circulation. Uh, so from October 2011, you can see what happened. Freed from the, the restriction of it having to be cash-based, all of a sudden, more and more Brixton pounds entered into circulation every month. 
this graph isn't quite up to date, I can tell you that we've actually now passed the 100,000 bricks and pound in circulation mark. <laughs> But, of course, that amount is worth a lot more to Brixton because those Brixton pounds circulate maybe three or four times before or, indeed, if they're exchanged back into sterling. So that money is worth a lot more than just the baseline figure. The other thing that we were able to do with the e-currency scheme was to play around with the model a bit and really give people an incentive to go and spend in their local businesses. So if you exchange Brixton pounds, uh, you get a 10% bonus, which is nice. So you, you pay 50 pounds into your Brixton pound account, you get 55. So now you've got some Brixton pounds, maybe you go to the market, you buy some apples, you send your text message, you get the apples. Now the market trader has some Brixton pounds, they pay a small transaction fee to us, which helps us fund our costs. Now let's say that this market trader is ambitious, maybe they want to do some web marketing. We have lots of good web designers and marketing professionals in Brixton who are happy to take payment in Brixton pounds. So that's not a problem. Uh, so they can go and get their web marketing done. But maybe the web designer needs a new computer, can't get that in Brixton. They need to be able to exchange back into sterling. That's also fine, but we penalize them for that because the message is if you spend your Brixton pounds locally, that's better and that's worth more to Brixton. Now, this isn't the whole picture, though. What's missing from this is Brixton's largest financial player, Lambeth Council. So last year, we worked on two innovative schemes incorporating the council into the Brixton Pound. In June last year, we launched a scheme allowing Brixton Pound businesses to pay their business rates using their Brixton Pound balance. And... Um, that was actually a first for the UK. Later in the year, uh, we launched another innovative scheme because we wanted Lambeth to have a way not just to receive bricks and pounds, but also to spend them. So we launched a scheme called Payroll Local, which allows all of Lambeth's 3,000 staff the option of receiving some of their salary directly in bricks and pounds. And of course, that's great because not only do we have bricks and pounds flowing through the council, um, but now we have lots of council staff going out and spending and discovering more local businesses. So now you really start to see a bit of a, a virtuous circle here. We see new wealth being created and people having a real incentive to patronise those businesses that put the most back into Brixton. But we're not done yet. We're currently working with Lambeth on extending the scheme still further and launching a Lambeth-wide currency. I can't tell you very much more about that at this stage because I'll go over time. Uh, so all I'll say is watch this space. But what I will also say is that we see a future where there are millions of Brixton pounds circulating every year. Obviously, at the moment, the amount of Brixton pounds in circulation is small. So you might say... Does that mean the scheme's not a success? The Brixton Pound has done more than just try and get more money circulating in Brixton. It's, it's become a talking point. As Blacker Dread said, it's changed Brixton from being infamous to famous. It's been a source of community pride. It started conversations about money and the nature of it and where you spend it and what difference that might make. We've also helped new businesses to set up, and we've linked existing businesses with other local businesses. So there's much more than just financial value to the Brixton Pound. When we get to a point, as we hope we will in a few years, where the circulation and the scale of the scheme has really increased, we're going to see these effects even more. And the Brixton Pound will continue to keep Brixton diverse and vibrant. Because ultimately, local currencies can do things that national currencies can't. Thank you.